individual titles at stake for men and women. And what is new is that Americans are among the top favorites. One is Donna Turnbow, the 16-year-old American national champion. Some think she's ready to make her move on the world scene. The same is true of Kurt Thomas, a 22-year-old student at Indiana State University who impressed the gymnastic world at the recent American Cup. The champions all from London by satellite. For more of what's on today's wide world, here's Jim Lampley. Think about uh, Olga Corbett, for example. It's been less than six years since we first met her in Munich. Now she's married to a Soviet rock star, duly wed in a wedding dress that she bought at J.C. Penney's in Midwest America. She's retired from the sport. Tiny Nadia Komenich, the heroine of Montreal. Well, already, less than two years later, she's the tallest member of the Romanian national women's team. That's the story in this sport, a very quick turnover. And it's one of the reasons that we're here today, because actually Nadia isn't here. Neither is the famous Nelly Kim of the Soviet Union. They're back home practicing new routines for the World Championships that will be conducted in France later this year, and which, by the way, will also come to you exclusively on Wide World of Sports. That gives us an opportunity here to zero in, to focus on athletes who are really on the brink of fame, who have been standing in the wings waiting for their chance in the world spotlight. Several of them, quite realistically, could be gold medalists as soon as the 1980 Olympic Games, and some of those are Americans. The competition's already underway, and we've already seen some very interesting performances. For example, this one, in the men's floor exercises, their first event, a young Russian, 17-year-old Andrei Popov. We've never seen him before. He's the newest member of their national team. Came through with a mark of 9.55 to take the lead among the men. Then there was Karen Robb, a real upset here, a British girl in her specialty. She's a British national champion in the vault, but she got a tremendous mark, 9.60, and she's the current women's leader. Well, that gets us generally up to date on the competition to this point. When I was talking about the quick turnover in gymnastics, I certainly should have mentioned Kathy Rigby Mason. Seems like yesterday that this young lady was a competitive gymnast, the best one that the United States ever had internationally. Today, she's not only married, she is a mother, and she is a TV commentator with us. Kathy, it's good to see you again. Good to see you too, Jim. What do you look for in this all-around women's competition? Well, I think the main thing, that, the most important thing is going to be consistency on all four events. And the Americans may do it here. Uh, Donna Turnbow from the United States is just looking magnificent. And if she can stay on that balance beam in the uneven bar, she has a good chance for the first place all around. Also, Svetlana Agapova from the Soviet Union uh, is going to give her some competition. She's a little weak on vault but uh, we'll make up on the other three events. And Sylvia Hindor from the German Democratic Republic is also very strong, especially on the balance beam. Okay, we should point out that each country gets only one entrant in the women's competition, one in the men's. Right now, we're going to see the women's uneven parallel bars. And first, here's that East German girl you mentioned, 17-year-old Sylvia Hindor. She's their national all-around champion. And in the first event here, the vault, she's second to Karen Robb of Great Britain. She does a move in a routine that shows a great deal of risk and originality. It's called a full twisting flange coming up right here. Beautiful. You have to shoot high enough to a handstand to be able to complete that twist. Moving really well. Notice how she fully extends every move. Something the judges are watching for. Getting ready for a dismount. Another flange. Another flange. Pop off. Heck, full twist. Nice exercise. Beautiful job by Sylvia Hindor. German Democratic Republic or East Germany. 9.40. Good mark. Now we move to Donna Turnbow. At age 16, remember, the American national champion. She didn't get off to too good a start in the vault. She's just fourth right now. She just started off with a beautiful mound. It's called a stalter shoot to a handstand. Really moving well. She also fully extends everything, which is so important. Nice handstand, turned right at the peak of that move. Getting ready for a dismount. Same dismount Nadia Komnich used. Beautiful. Well done exercise. Anna Turnbow. Watch, she turns right at the peak of that handstand. Now, from this stomach whip, full twist, she's got to get enough height in her hips to get a good rotation to complete this front somersault with a half twist. There's the mark, 9.45, a good solid one. Puts her in second place at the moment overall. This is Marilena Neakshu of Romania. At age 17, she's the Romanian beam champion, so this is not her best event. 
eighth all around in the European Championships. She works smoothly on this event. Not a great deal of originality, but she does have good form. She fully extends everything. Nice handstand. Good, good handstand. She didn't fall out of it as she usually does. Needs a little more swing. She's working up and down very well, but not too much swing. And a backflip dismount. Nice routine. Okay, Marlena and the actor who had a medium range 9.3 in the vault needs to move up a little bit. Let's see. There's the Akshu's mark, 9.45. She needed that. In a minute, we'll see the current leader, Karen Robb. He's a very powerful gymnast, very strong. Beautiful mount. She really uses the, the bounce of the bars to help her. Little bend arms on that handstand. Fell out of it a little bit. She's a Yorkshire lass from Huddersfield. Little low on that flange. Should shoot right up to the handstand in there. But she's really moving pretty well. Slight form break. Here's her dismount. Front flip. Nice landing. Good exercise. Well, she's the British national champion in this event as well as the ball. And here is that mark. 9.30 there for Karen Rock. That knocks her out of first place by five one hundredths of a point. Now we have Svetlana Agapova on the asymmetric bars, as they are sometimes called, or uneven parallel bars, from the Soviet Union. The Russians have always been known for their originality, such as that move right there, beautiful. Uh, and she's really no exception. Look at the tight form. Absolutely no breaks. She is 14 years old. Beautiful exercise. There's another original move. Handstand with a half twist in a straddle position. Jim, she's had no break so far. Wow. Good exercise. Well, last year she was their national junior champion in the Soviet Union. Here's her mark in London. 9.40 for a little Svetlana. It's a good one. So here's how they stand in the women's competition at the halfway point. Hindorf the leader, followed by Rob, and a tie for third between Turnbow and Agapova. Much more to come here right now to the World Lumberjack Champion. Branch of the sport, Gordon Maddox. Good to see you, Gordon. We would repeat that there's only one entrant in the men's division from the United States and from all of the countries here, as th there is in the women's competition. The only American male entrant, Kurt Thomas. Can he win this thing? Oh, I think he can, Jim. In fact, you recall, a month ago, we had the American Cup, Madison Square Garden. Kurt Thomas not only won the all-around in the American Cup, he won every single event against some really tough international competition. Well, Kurt is serving notice on the world that the American men are here to stay. We've had a junior program working for about five years. We've got many products of this junior program now that are going to make us really just super tough in all these international matches and the World and Olympic Championships. I think uh, Kurt is the guy to beat. And right now coming up is his specialty, the side horse. First man we're going to see, however, in this event is Stoyan Delchev, the young Bulgarian. And Jim, he really can do it all. He's working very far from his hands. There he's working behind his back. Those two things are a mark of a world-class side horse performer. Now he's moved back up. He's got to work the other end. Of, look, there's the Thomas Whirl, a variation on the Thomas Whirl, the thing that Curtis made so popular all over the world. Well, he has completed all of his requirements except right there he's gotten all three sections of the horse and he has done a superb exercise all right Stoyan Delchev looking for his mark 9.45 very solid very good this is Andrei Popov of the Soviet Union Jim, Popov, he's, ex go ahead. excuse me he's going to be one to really watch look how he swings now he's young and this event of course can jump up and just grab the inexperienced performer but he really extends his hips out away from his hands the leader at the end of one one event at the end of the vault he had nine five five well he's going to make it interesting because he's not going to score that well here and of course kurt thomas is coming up and this is his best event All right there's the mark for pop up 9.25 well that gives thomas a shot to take the lead and now here is Kurt Thomas. He has a chance to take the lead in the overall competition here. This is his specialty. He should star in this one. Well, he's got to hit in this one. I think that's even more important, Jim. 
this is where he can make up points that he cannot afford to give any away. Now, look how cleanly he's working. You know, he's matured so much in competition, Jim, he just looks very, very comfortable when he gets on the apparatus. There's that Thomas Whirl with a half turn in the middle. Had a little hitch in the middle, and I doubt that the judges will pick it up. You did. Well, but I'm special. No. Kurt Thomas of the United States. Well, yeah, there's the leader right yeah. now. All right. At age 22, student at Indiana State University, makes his home in Miami, Florida. Well, let's watch that sensational leg work again by Thomas. It's a series of undercuts of one leg with that half turn in the middle. And in doing these undercuts, he has to keep one leg virtually in a split while the other leg works uh, horizontally underneath it. Extraordinary work. He bangs the horse a little bit at the end. We'll be able to take a look at it. Uh, but that's not a discount at all. But I'll tell you, being able to work horse strong gives an all-around man a real advantage. You call that one all right, Gordon. 9.80, Thomas has taken the lead. And here, then, are the current standings among the men. It's Kurt Thomas of the United States, the leader, followed by Stoyan Delchev, the Bulgarian, and third now, Andrei Popov of the Soviet Union. What did you just give him? His beer. It's the only light beer with gusto. Oh, yeah? Schlitz light. Beer drinkers know it took Schlitz to bring the taste to light. This is the current leader in the women's competition, Sylvia Hindorf of East Germany. You know, many of the gymnasts have gotten away from the balletic type arm movements and, and jumps, but she seems to really hold on to it, and uh, looks like she's had quite a few years of ballet. She Another only, flexibility move. Only leads Donna Turnbow, the United States, who's tied for third by one-tenth of a point. It's very close. She didn't take that leap up as high as she usually does. She's a good jump jumper, and that was a little bit low. East Germans always have a very colorful uniform. Look at that distance. Full twisting oh. back to the tuck position. All right, let's see what kind of a mark Miss Hindorf got. 9.35. That can be beaten. On the beam now, Marilena Neakshu of Romania. She's very consistent and very good with both dance and tumbling moves. She does a move in her balance beam routine, a front flip, which is very original and, and extremely difficult because it's a blind move. Here she goes with her back flip, back walk over right into a back tuck. Beautiful landing, very solid. She's coached by Bella Corogli, who also coaches two young women named Nadia Komanich and Teodoro Ungurianu. Something new, though. They're no longer coached by uh, Bella, not any of the girls. Uh, he is only coaching some of the younger ladies. She is with her first coach, her original coach that she had when she started out. Niakshu is not among the top three, but she's still only about two ten tenths of a point behind, so she's not out of it. There's that front flip, mm. and beautiful. And you know, in practice, the only time she had a, a little fault on it, uh, she sat right on the beam and didn't fall off at all, so she has that down solid. Good split jump. How long ago did they make that coaching change with Karoyi? I'm not quite sure, but I think it was about uh, two or three months ago. Mm -hmm. Good back handspring. She's moving very well. Good exercise. Full twisting, front flip. Nice routine. Uh, Marilena Neakshu from Sibiu, Romania. The mark, 9.50. You were right about that. Now here comes Donna Turnbow, the American who was fourth in the first event, then at the end of two events, tied for third. Now, if she can get a 9.50, she'll take the lead in this competition. Only one more event to go. Donna has a capability of doing just that, if she can stay consistent. In the past, unfortunately, the Americans have fallen off a great deal on this event. They, she does have great mental discipline, though, and I think that she can do it here. Won the silver medal in the recent American Cup. Beautiful aerial. Jim, she's working well. She has a couple of critical moves coming up. She's very graceful, isn't she? Yes, she is. She looks like she's had 
the ballet training that's so important. Good Valdez, right on. A Valdez named after a former great gymnast, right? As most right. of these things usually most are. Most of the tricks are. It's the same in figure skating, you know. Very expressive arms, which is important. The judges are looking for that. Right into a back tack. Mm. Good position. Nice. That was a critical move for her, and she did it very well. Good landing on that four-inch wide beam that's four feet off the floor. Right. Now she can. Good cartwheel. Good pull twisting back. She could do it. We sure gave it a good effort. Donna Turnbow, it's up to the judges now to see where she'll stand with only one event to go. She's done it exactly what she had to do. 9.6, taking the lead over Hindorf of East Germany by one-tenth of a point with one event to go. And the Americans in the past have not done as well as they'd like to do on the balance beam, but they sure are coming up. That's great to see. Okay. Area, second to Kurt Thomas of the United States by four-tenths of a point. Jim, he has been very highly touted all over this part of the world. And after watching him so far, I can see why. He's a, technically a very, very sound gymnast. Now, we've just seen him swing to a handstand and successfully prevent the rings from picking up any swing. Now, he's done a giant swing. He'll have to get to one more handstand, of course, with strength. All right, now here comes his press to a handstand. So far, I must say, he's looking at like a 9-3 score. All right, a flip us off, a double front with a half twist. All right, with previous marks of 9-4 and 9-4-5, here comes his mark on the rings. Del Jeff, 9.50, that's a good one. I once had an orthopedic surgeon tell me that what he has just done to his shoulders is not the way the Lord intended those shoulders to be used. It's called an inlocate. Does an inlocate, kip, and then lowers to a cross. A very nice start. Kurt Thomas, with a mark of 9.15 or better, can hold on to his lead at the moment over Delchev, the Bulgarian who's in second place. And really, uh, Jim, isn't it a strange position for you and I, after all these years, to be sitting here talking about an American man in the lead of a world gymnastics event? I can't get used to it. I love it. Don't get me wrong. Mm. This event for Kurt, I've always said, was not his strongest event, and I have to take that back because Kurt has increased his difficulty by at least 50% in every event he works, and now he's very, very viable in all of them. His the, rings are absolutely dead solid. This is the third of six men's events. There are four for the women, six for the men. Okay. Well, Jim, if he can keep it up, he's going to have a nice stay here in England. Okay, let's see if he gets that 9.15 or better. Oh, look at that. That gives Thomas a lead of a full half point with three events to go. We'll be back for the climax of this meet. Right now, for a word on a future Wide World show, let's go to Bill Fleming. You're looking at a mountain called Angel's Landing in the Zion National Park in the southwestern corner of the state of Utah. It has taken nature over 700 million years to sculpt the sheer face of this sandstone rock. Next week on ABC's Wide World of Sports, rock climber George Willick and his partner Steve Matus will attempt to scale this formidable rock formation. It rises some 1,500 vertical feet from the floor of the canyon. We're going to be here live to cover their two-day climb. Now, at the end of the first day, George Willick hopes to find a ledge big enough to spend the night on. He and his partner will sleep in hammocks suspended in space, hooked to the mountain only by a couple of steel pitons. Their path up Angel's Landing can only be determined when they begin the climb, but George hopes to make the ascent as free as possible, in other words, without the aid of any devices. Bill Fleming, and I must admit to you that this is one of the most unusual and interesting events that we have ever covered in the 17 years of wide world of sports. I'm standing at the base of Angel's Landing, and it's just incredible to me as I turn and look up the sheer face of this mountain to realize that there are people with the strength and the courage and the knowledge to scale such heights. In fact, it almost looks flat when you look at it from the base of the mountain itself. 
And if you look very carefully, you'll see what they call a window. That's a little narrow ledge that George Willig and Steve Matus plan to spend the night. Frankly, we are in awe of such a venture. Now, for those of you who perhaps are not familiar with the name George Willig, you may recall an event that happened last summer in New Jersey. Marvin Marvin walks back. And the leaders in both all-around categories are Americans. In the men's division, this is Kurt Thomas. This was his vault, a beautiful one, that gave him a mark of 9.50 and extended his overall lead by two-tenths more of a point. Kurt Thomas, a young fellow from Indiana State University. His closest pursuer here, Stoyan Delchev, on the parallel bars, got a 9.55, a very impressive mark. But Kurt came right back at him again equaled that mark of 9.55 and maintained his lead. One more event left for the men, the high bar. First competitor for men on the high bar, Stoyan Delchev of Bulgaria. And Jim, he is the Bulgarian national champion, and I think he also is either champion or co-champion of Europe. So this is his big event, and he's been a very consistent performer all through the competition. Well, he's, he's in the, the uh, dorsal grip now, Eagle Giant. Excuse me, Jim. He is, in fact, I was going to say, the European champion in this event. Really a nice high mm. lifted double flyaway with a twist and it really delayed it out there. Boy, he seemed to hang up there for a moment. Delchev will set the pace now with this mark. 9.6, that'll give Kurt Thomas something to shoot at. If you wanted to protect the things you own from the... Remember, it's dropped down to fourth place now with this one event remaining behind Kurt Thomas, Delchev the Bulgarian, and Tabak the Czech. Well, he's a young guy, a part of these emerging from their junior team, but I must say that the American junior team seems to have taken an edge in international competition yet this year. Uh-uh. Ooh, triple Whoa. flyaway. What a... I thought it was going to come down right on top of the bar. It was a beauty, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, after I opened my eyes, I loved it. Here comes the mark. Up off 9.50. Good mark. But he was too far behind, I believe. Kurt Thomas needs only a 9.0 to win the men's overall championship here. We're closing in on a terrific story. If he should win and Donna Turnbow can hold on, we could have a double American championship here. I believe you're right, Jimmy. You know, like the American Cup, he has won four of the six events so far. Very nice high straddle heck ball. As we said earlier, he really has dominated the competition. The only one he didn't win was the first one, men's floor exercise. All right. Oh, what great consistency. Super meet. Kurt Thomas of the United States. Has he done it? Well, here it comes. 9.75. Now, no doubt about it, all the way, Kurt Thomas has won the men's individual all-around at Champions All. There he is. And here we are in slow motion again, watching this straddle hecked ball. Watch how he reaches back behind his legs to re-catch the bar. Kips, changes hands now, pivot to reverse grip giants. He'll then take one more pivot on top of the bar and get set up for his dismount. Now he's going to be doing a full twisting double flyaway, half twist on each somersault. Here it comes now. Half in, half out, and a stunning finish for a fine performance. Thomas the winner then by 85 one hundredths of a point over Delchev the Bulgarian, pop off the Russian, pulled up to take third place in the men's competition. We move to the final event for the women, the floor exercises. And this is Sylvia Hindorf of East Germany. Watch this first tumbling run. A Russian front, run off, lift up, double twist, beautifully done, good height. Small correction on the score. She trails not by a tenth of a point, but by 15 one hundredths of a point, she trails Donna Turnbow of the United States. Beautiful exercise so far. 
very graceful arms, and as well as good, good tumbling. Watch this next tumbling run. Good height. Two Arabians. Once again, in this event, Donna will have the advantage, if it is an advantage, of knowing what she has to get to move ahead of this girl again. You can put a little more adrenaline into it. <laughs> Germans have always been very unique in their style. How do they differ? Well, her, well she's doing much more ballet, unlike Nadia Komenich, for example, who's more angular. Whoops, Ooh. that's going to cost that's... her a lot. A little bit tired on that. That's where the endurance comes in. Could cost her the championship here, couldn't it? Sure could. It probably will. The East German national champion, Sylvia Hindorf, she just wasn't high enough to finish her rotation and fit in a double twist. A lack of endurance. Not quite enough punch. Donna Turnbow of the United States can wrap up a beautiful afternoon in her life right here. She needs a mark. Where we have it, unofficially, of only 8.9 to take the lead. But yet to come, remember, is Niakshu of Romania. So she'll want as good a mark as she can get to wrap I, it up. I believe that she really has the edge here. She has great endurance and good height on her tumbling. Starts out with a double-twisting layout. Beautiful. Whoops. Slight step back. She's two-tenths ahead of Niakshu, the girl yet to come, coming to this final event. She has to keep the brakes to a very minimum here. This slow speed that she's at right now, it gives her a rest for those tumbling moves. Handspring front. Beautiful. No form brakes there. Dramatic change from Alouette to something much more serious. It's important for that to have that uh, rhythm change. And when you stop like that, it just gives you a nice rest for those very difficult tumbling runs. Eventually, she plans on putting a double back in the beginning and a double twist at the end. Very nice exercise. All right, Donna Turnbow. Remember, the Nadia Komaniches and the Nelly Kims aren't here, but there's still a good field, and this girl's on her way to bigger things, looks like. Here comes the mark for Donna. Donna's mark, 9.45. She has really given the Akshu a tough job. Hello, everybody. Alaska. She's going to beat Donna Turnbow. It's going to be pretty difficult. Her tumbling isn't as strong as Donna's, but she may just do it if she can hold on to that form and bring her tumbling up a little bit. Double twist, not as good as Donna's. Slight form break on the end. see a complete different style here. Remember, if Niakshu can't do it, Americans will have won both titles at stake here, men's and women's all around. I don't think that's ever happened outside our country before. Not that I can remember, Jim. Good tumbling run. Working well. Jim is going to be close. I don't believe she'll get that 9-7, but you never can tell. Flip-flop, lay out back. The first tumbling run is, has to be equal in difficulty with the last tumbling run. And her last tumbling run was a little bit less difficult in it. She made the effort, though. Marilena Neakshu, she has done it or not. Here comes the decision. 9.35 is not going to do it. It's a clean sweep for the Americans, for Kurt Thomas and for Donna Turnbow, something we don't believe has ever happened in a meet outside the United States. A sensational day for the USA. They're on their way to big thing to the World Championships later this year, which we'll be televising, and then the Olympics in 1980. Kurt, what a great day for American gymnastics. First of all, congratulations on Thank your you. victory. Now we've seen Donna also wrap it up, a double American victory. I'm not sure that that has ever happened outside the continental limits of the United States. Two quick questions for you. First of all, were you at all uh, concerned when you fell behind on the first event? Yeah, I was concerned. I, uh, I was playing it too careful, I think, and it just 
I don't know, it got to me throughout my whole routine. But then, you know, I, my coach started talking to me. I got, I got it back, so it felt pretty good after about the third event. And you may have been sagging a little bit by the high bar, but it sure didn't show. Congratulations yeah. to you. Let's bring in Donna now. Here she comes. Donna, congratulations to you. A Thank double you. American victory is really a, a day to remember for American gymnastics. It's really moving this time, huh? Yeah, I'm really excited. I should think you would be. Uh, to wrap up the story the, the way it was, of course, Nadia wasn't here. Nellie Kim wasn't here. Andre Nup wasn't here. The Japanese weren't here. But this was a very representative international field, and it means big things in the future, I think. I'm sure Kathy Rigby Mason would agree with that. Where's Gordon? There he is over here. Nice to have you chaps with us on a big day for the Americans. Congratulations, Donna. Congratulations, Kurt. Thank you. On to the World Championships in France. We'll be seeing you there on Wide World of Sports. That's the story by Satellite from London. The executive producer of ABC's Wide World of Sports is Rune Arledge. Our coordinating producer, Dennis Lewin. The Champions All Gymnastics Meet was produced by Bryce Wiseman. World Lumberjack Championships produced by Doug Wilson and directed by Larry Kang. The George Willick Preview was produced and directed by Ned Steckel. Our coordinating director is Joe Assetti and the associate director in England, John DeLisa. Be sure to be with us next weekend on ABC's Wide World of Sports for live coverage of George Willick's climb.